Coolio. Right, there we go. So I've got some stamping card. I'm also going to use my... Now, if you've never seen me do this before, if you're new today, I'm going to take you through stamping. I know lots of you know how to do it, and I know lots of you have done it before, but with always new people, you can see this is my mucky cloth that I use for generally, generally, generally what I'm stamping. It's just one of those microfiber cloths you get for cleaning. I think this, that you know, these were like four for a pound or something like that. I can't remember now. I've had them a long time, um, and I always put this onto a surface and it gives a bit of squidge underneath my stamp um, mainly because I'm sitting down if I was going to stand up and stamp and, and I can put a bit more um, pressure onto it then it's not too bad but if you, ever you're getting uneven stamping just get one of these microfiber cloths put it underneath your card and you will find it's like a miracle has occurred right so I'm going to be making some bunting with you today, first of all, some Jubilee bunting. And like I said, I've done some of it. I'm going to show you how I made a piece of the bunting and then I will reveal the, all the bunting to you. Um, I'm going to use for my bunting, and I've actually taken them out of the packets. Let me find the packets as well, because I've got stuff everywhere. I'm going to be using my, now these are mine are very well loved, so I'd definitely better show you the packets. I'm going to be using, these stamps here um, and I bet lots of you've got these it's not long now only five weeks away yes it is Linda and so if you're going to get those um jubilee stickers you want to get them made don't you because you want to be have them up and ready for whatever you're using them for um so I should imagine a few of you have got these if you haven't got these you need them in your life this is the alphabet and numbers the crystal art alphabet and numbers which means that you can personalize um write names do all sorts of things with these. You've also got in the numbers, you've got the um, ampersands, the hashtag and the at, and also the question mark and the exclamation mark. And these are a lovely size of stamp. You'll see mine are slightly stained and well used. Ooh, let me take those out of the way. You'll see that they are lovely large letters and numbers, which for the purpose of what I'm doing today are just great because I can make something that's large enough for people to be able to read from a distance, which is what I want. Are you putting in the overtime? I am, Laura. I am putting in the overtime. <laughs> oh, it's not, yeah, well, I don't mind this. It's all good fun. I'll just be crafting at my desk on my own, wouldn't I? Not talking to myself instead of talking to you guys. So these are the crystal art numbers and letters. And I'm going to be using these in my, for my bunting. So I could write anything with these. If I could write Queen Elizabeth, I could write Platinum Jubilee, I could write, you know, whatever it is, happy birthday, um, wedding day, whatever it is you want to make your bunting for, you can make it because you've got all the letters and numbers you need and you can make them any colour you like, any time you like. They are my absolute go-to. I use them all the time. So I'm going to be using those. I'm also going to be using... Now I've lost you see, this one. I, when I was at the NEC, I lost the packaging for my my little um, cupcake stamp. So this is um, one of our lovely stamp sets that was in this set with the balloons, um, which was our celebration stamp sets. This is the one with the little cupcake. It's got the cupcake star, the little cherry and everything. I'm going to be using those cupcakes as well for my invitation and that heart for the bunting and I was actually thinking I haven't had time but I was actually thinking I could have used the balloons and done did um could have done them in red white and blue as well but I haven't done that um so I'm going to use some of those stamps I'm also going to use oh see there's lots to choose from because you don't have to have all these just some of them and you can do all sorts of things, but just definitely the alphabet number. I'm going to use the little crown, maybe, out of here. But I did, I did remember we have another little crown, which isn't strictly crystal art. Well, I would love those. Yeah, they're great, um, Catherine. They're great because you can use them again and again. And I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to use the congratulations out of this lovely little set, which is your floral fizz. This is also lovely. If you do red, white and blue flowers on here, make a lovely jubilee Um card if you're thinking of sending a card to anybody special um but i also found now this isn't strictly crystal art this is our gemit one of our gemit stamp sets which is i actually i thought that, that it sold out but it hasn't there's still a few available on the website it's got a beautiful crown in it and it's also got this lovely book which i kind of feel like 
is quite apt for um, the Jubilee and also this gorgeous flourish, which is great to use with your crystal art. These gemmets have different sizes, but what I like to do is use my crystal art spare gems and then also some of my feature beads, which you might have seen I did a post about those. I don't know why, but I can't reply to people. Sometimes, Yvonne, if you come out of the live and then come back into it, um, it's just a little glitch, it'll let you do it then. So all sorts of things to play with tonight and also maybe some dies as well. I'll show you in a minute. But anyway, back to stamping. So I've got my card, I've got my microfiber cloth. I'm going to use, because I'm going to use our little gem pens, I'm going to use a black ink pad, Memento um, ink, and I'm going to get one of my lovely, let's have a number as I was writing. So what I've written for my bunting is Jubilee Party 2022. So I need a two. So let's do the two. And all I'm going to do, so you'll see that this is this is a polymer stamp, so it's clear and it's sticky. So all I'm going to do is put the flat side onto an acrylic block. If ever you're not sure about stamping and you want to know the basic equipment, Oh, you've vanished off my tablet. Just a minute, let me find you again. If ever you want to know about stamping um, and you're looking for basic equipment, if you go to my Naomi Craft Buddy um, Facebook page, pinned to the top of the page is a list of what I use for stamping. Oh, let's see what's going on here. It seems to have gone off. Hmm. Yeah, we're still here, I think. We appear to be. Right, don't know what's going on there. Just stopped on my... I hope, I'm sorry if it's freezing. I hope there's nothing going on with Facebook. Let me know if you if I'm still live or if I vanish. So I'm just going to start, ink up my stamp and then stamp that onto a piece of stamping card. And the card you use will affect um, what you can use on it. So this is our lovely stamping card that we do, which I know is back in stock very soon um you can see it gives a lovely clear impression and those circles are the same size as your your tips on what to use came in oh i'm really glad laura i'm glad that it was useful oh brilliant gail it just it just stopped on my tablet for some strange reason um the circles on the stamp that stamps out are the same size as our crystals i'm going to stamp out a cupcake as well while I'm here um, and the circle will kind of sit underneath so you haven't got all these like circly circly like um, bits you can see after I'm going to ink up so again the same way I'm going to add that stamp to my acrylic block just tap your ink pad all over okay um, and then just I'm just going to stamp this as well I'm going to be cutting these out so I'm just going to walk my fingers all over the stamp, okay, and you'll see it gives a lovely clear impression. All right, so I'm going to remove that cloth now because I don't need that there anymore, and I'm going to use a few pens. So I'm only going to use, um, let me just bring in my colour. So I'm using our gem pens, which are this little set of 40 pens, which fit on my desk really nicely. I want this blue and I want the red and I don't need white <laughs> so I'm going to do now because I've got a chisel tip and because I'm going to cut these out I can colour that too go over the edge make it easier for cutting out it's that simple because I know that too needs to be red I'm also going to on my cupcake case it's where the little cupcake folds are is lines so and again I'm not going to worry about going over the edge of this so I've got Red, white, blue, red, white, blue, red, white, blue, red. So you can see I'm just missing two each time to, so I can do a little pattern of red, white and blue. Um, and I could have used the dark blue. I've gone for quite bright blue because that's the colour of blue card I had in my stash. I didn't have um a darker blue card so 
you know, if you look at mine and you think, oh, I would have liked a darker blue, you, you can do yours any colour you like, but I'm using the colours of what I've got in my stash. So then I'm going to do, like, you know that kind of, um, sometimes you see that rainbow, it's kind of like rainbow icing, but I'm going to do it in red, white and blue. So I'm going to follow the lines on the icing on the cupcake and just basically colour red, white and blue. Um, where I want these to be and this will just tell me where where the colour of crystals are I also looked at the colour of blue crystals I had and also that helped me choose my blue because look I've got lots of this lovely blue that's almost exactly the same as my pen which is great so I've got, I've got all those spare blue crystals so I was like okay that works perfectly with those then um you can, of course, go on to the Craft Buddy website and we do sell single packs of crystals if there are particular colours you want and you know the DCM codes for. I just tend to look by eye. I don't, I don't use the codes and things because usually when, they've, when they're spares from a, a picture, they're all, all different, aren't they? So, right, red, white and blue. So I'm going to follow the blue up here as well on the icing. And it really is this relaxing. So, because if you, it, this could also be, if you were following that sort of purple and silver theme of the platinum jubilee colours, you could also do this in a, in a, um, a purple pen and a grey pen and then put some lovely silver crystals on here, couldn't you? So it doesn't have to be red, white and blue. I just, just went with what I got. And I'm going to purposely go over the edge a bit just to make cutting out a bit easier right so I just need a bit of a cake colour which I want I'm going to use this we're going to go I, I feel like the Queen likes kind of like vanilla sort of Victoria sandwich kind of cakes I could be wrong you might know what the Queen's favourite cake is but I'm going vanilla with vanilla buttercream today there we go so those are all colored so all i'm going to do to them um is cut them out and it really is not tricky because like i said i've given myself some extra i'm going to cut this big piece off put that out of the way for a minute now, I'm not going to cut out. There's two extra little sort of like squiggly lines that if I was just stamping onto card, I might leave, but I don't want them for my bunting. I'm going to cut. We always give you a nice clear line. I'm going to trim this round to cut out this too. I'm just going to make it easy for myself by not having a big piece of card. It's, the smaller the card is, the easier it is to twist and turn the way you want it to go. So I'm going to cut this out, okay, going round, and, sorry, I can't apply either. Oh, I don't know, you can see me, you can hear me. I think Facebook is having a bit of a, a blip because, like I said, it, it went off my tablet a little while ago. As long as you can see me then hopefully you can see what's going on that's most important thing and if you can't reply to each other i apologize but i think facebook is having a bit of a funny old moment okay so i'm just going to cut out this cake and again like i said we give you a nice clear line around the edge to make this nice and simple so let's just and this there we go it really is this the work of moments really because they're nice simple shapes um, and you've got this little cupcake um, which I'm going to use for the invitation and not for the bunting you could have custard cupcakes on your bunting yes we can see it as long as you can see and hear me Linda I'm happy um, I know Facebook does have some, I had a friend of mine who was doing a live in another group the other day 
and she just couldn't get on at all. Facebook just wasn't having any of it. So sometimes when they're updating things or they're doing something, it just plays up, doesn't it? And I don't know. It's far too technical. So we've got that cupcake and that little number two. And I'm going to add my magic glue. And I'm, I'm, I tell you, you know what? Darren, if you're watching, that you'll appreciate this. <laughs> I am forever ruining brushes because I never remember to wash them after I finished a Facebook Live and then I go back and they're completely ruined. So I'm using my finger so I don't you, you ruin another brush uh, because my finger is much easier and quicker to clean than a brush. So I'm adding, this is the Crystal Art Magic Glue and what this is basically going to do is turn my little cupcake and my little number two that I've stamped out into a faux Crystal Art project. It's basically creating that sticky surface that you're used to. If you've never used Magic Glue, if you ever have a canvas, one of our canvases, let's get a wet wipe, um, and it loses some of its stick, maybe maybe um, something's got stuck to it or whatever, you've leaned on it, like I mean I do that all the time, or whatever, this is the stuff for, that you can use to repair that, but it, when it comes to stamping, it's amazing stuff because it just turns any project you do into a, so you can make your own crystal art cards and projects and all sorts of things. So you can see at the moment that that blue is white and what I need is for that to go clear, but have no fear. I've got one I made earlier. So what I've got here, oh, put those two out of the way for a minute somewhere where I'm not going to stick myself to them. Let them go clear. I've got two that I did earlier and I've put some of our non-stick double-sided film on there so that you can see. I don't know if you can see how shiny that is. Look how sticky. Oh my goodness. It's, oh, so sticky. Um, I'm going to take that two out from under there because I need to the bunting and then put the tape to the side for a minute. <laughs> so you can see that it's no longer white it's gone clear and shiny okay oh my goodness this is where the fun starts i've already cut it out the reason i've cut it out is because it's quite tricky to cut out once it's got the crystals on because um that it just makes it difficult to get the scissors in near the edges right because the crystals are obviously 3d ish so I'm going to decan. I've got some red crystals here and I'm going to decan to few. I'm probably going to use my triple end just because I can and pick up three at a time and just place those where you want them on your number and because you've got all of this the same colour it's quite easy to use that triple end on your um, pen it's much easier once you've got a few down because you can then put your finger on top of those to speed up the process of making you know I spent a long time when I first started using crystal art not using the triple end of this tool and now I'm wondering what I was thinking yeah, I'm the same. Diane, I'm terrible. I it, I ruin brushes. It's not anything to do with the product. It's purely to do with me not remembering to clean them and getting carried away with something else. And then they just... And the worst one is if you leave um, Crystal Art Sealer on a brush and leave it to dry well, <laughs> it, turns into, it turns it into a chisel. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. How are you today? I hope you're well. Right, so you can see I'm just adding in these crystals. How much quicker is this look with this? Why why did I spend so much of my time with crystal art putting one crystal on at a time? You can always move them around because like the magic glue is just like, see, look, I've already done that end. So we're just adding in these crystals and this won't take a minute because I'm doing three at a time. Um... It just is so much simpler, isn't it? I'm always learning. The magic glue is amazing stuff, Catherine, isn't it? 
and it just means that you can turn all your projects, make your own projects, use up all your lovely crystals, um, and have a good old, I get a bit creative with it, isn't it? Create all your own stuff. So I always, there's always one or two that don't have a little place to have three lined up, isn't there? Um, but we're getting there. You can see that it's much, much quicker. I'm trying very hard not to do the cereal spiller thing that I normally do when I'm on this page. So, you could use the wooden... Yep, yeah, you could use those, Linda. That's a very good idea. You're right, I could use a wooden tool to do that. I'll have to give that a try. You see, this is it, that's what I said. Always learning new things. Um, it's all right once there's a few crystals on, because I can put my finger on top of the crystals, but in the meantime, it's a bit tricky, isn't it? So I'm going to get most of this done with the three. You can see how quickly this starts building when you're using the triple-ended part of your tool. So if you like me, and I was a bit nervous about being able to pick three up at a time and getting them, um, go for it, because boy, oh boy, is it quicker. Yeah, this magic glue is super clear. And I've got a brand new bottle at the moment and it seems to be really, really sticky. <laughs> Not that it isn't always sticky, but it just seems to be super sticky. Right, let's get that one down there. See, we're nearly there. Just end up with a few little odd ones that I need to place. And then a few to nudge about. And we'll be good to go. So we'll do that to two down there. And in there. And I'll just finish off these. How much quicker was that? What have I been doing not using this triple end? Why did no one tell me? I haven't tried the seven yet. I know there's a five and a seven. I've not been brave enough to go that far. So there's just one or two I need to nudge about a little bit. And then we're there. So that one needs nudging a bit. There we go. So there's that two. Oh, how quick was that? There. So there's the two. I know that there's probably one or two that could be aligned a bit better. Um, but we'll power on through. So I've done some cutting, okay. Um, I've used a couple of our nesting dies. I'll show you. So I've used these oval nesting dies. These are what the shape I'm using for my bunting. You could cut rectangles of card if you wanted to, or triangles. I wanted to do ovals. And the reason I wanted to do ovals is probably a little bit of a funny one. But this oval shape reminded me, you know those... Um, Wedgwood silhouettes. You always see the Queen's face in silhouette, don't you? It kind of reminded me of a Wedgwood frame with the blue and the white. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to use the oval for my bunting. So I've got, um, this is the, the middle sized oval and then I've got a circle, the second smallest circle from our, our circle set as well that I'm going to use to make these. Um, you'll be pleased to know that I've done all the other letters and numbers for this bunting. Because <laughs> it's quite long. Right, so it's the red one. So I'm going to use one of my crystal art stamps in a slightly different way. Okay, so this little heart is from the um, cupcake set that I showed you, which is on the website. Um, and I don't know, some of you might not, some of you will have seen this. Hello, Joyce. Some of you will have seen this, some of you not. Um, but I'm going to use this heart, which is a crystal art stamp, to create my own little magic painting, magic water painting. So I'm using some oxide ink, which is a, which is a, like a water-soluble ink. It'll move with water. If I was to use a memento, it wouldn't move. It would stamp and it won't move, but an oxide ink will move with water and that's what I want. So I'm going to go off the edge a bit and stamp some hearts, our little queen of hearts, um, onto this little topper. I'm going to give that a white because I want to use a different colour of ink now. Because we're, we're still stick I'm still sticking with that red, white and blue theme. So I'm going to go with some blue. This is salty, salty ocean if you want to know your distress oxides because like I said, you can see that the colour matches in perfectly with that card that I had in my stash for the red, white and blue theme. So I'm going to put some blue over here and a little bit of blue coming down there. That's enough. 
all I need. Okay, so I'll put those ink pads out of the way. See, it look, doesn't look too bad on my desk, does it? it looks, <laughs> you should see the chaos around me. Right, so I've got that. I'm going to give that... I'm going to get that everywhere, aren't I? There we go. So I've got that, and I'm going to use my, a water brush. This is one of the Craft Buddy water brushes. They are on the website. I've already got water in here. It's already loaded. So just make sure it's clean, because I was using it earlier. Um, and what it will do... Can you... Uh, when I add water to this you'll see that the colour will move. You'll still get a slightly spotty texture in the background, but because it's a distress, uh, because it's an oxide ink and it moves with water, and it'll work with a distress ink as well, that's also the same, or a pigment um, ink pad, you can move it with water and just create. So instead of just using them with your crystals, you could add crystals if you wanted to. I just want to create a little bit of interest in the background of my bunting piece. So I'm going to give that brush a little bit of a clean and then just go into the blue and do the same thing. Just wash out that colour a bit just to create a different background. So it's just another way of using your crystal art stamps to know that you can almost watercolour with them. Okay, so that's that little bit done. I'm also going to take some of that blue ink and use one of my little daubers and just edge this little circle white circle yeah like a cameo brooch that's exactly what yeah that's what I thought um Gail that the shape of the oval and the color blue and white particularly um I haven't cut them all out in blue and white but it just made me think of that sort of cameo shape which sort of felt quite regal to me um yeah, there's a few little, little things I've tried to do with this bunting, which so I've used hearts because she is our, our queen of hearts, really, isn't she? The queen. 90. It's just, yeah. What is she now? 96. Is it 96? Yeah, it's 96, isn't it? I've just I've been left my bottle upside down. So I know it's on its last legs. It's going to take a little while to come down. <laughs> it's all right, it'd been in the Ziploc bag, but it was not, definitely not facing the right way. All I'm getting is air coming out. <laughs> there we go. This takes a while to come back down. Right, so I'm going to... <laughs> oh dear, I'm upside down. So off we go again. Just kept my glue in my Ziploc bag. Just not the right way around. <laughs> um... Just add some glue around here and I'm going to add this onto my little oval like so and there's some little faux stitching on these ovals it just frames it nicely I'm then going to add my circle which I've edged in blue because I've got white on white and I want it to match in with the frame okay and what I've done is I've done I've, I cut out ovals enough for my wording in red, white and blue, funnily enough. So that's now, can you see how that background has now become the background rather than, because there was nothing in the middle. I'm not using a scrap of card for this. So I can now add in this two. Yeah, and the one, the one that I put the magic glue on is nearly um, clear already, actually. So I've got that one. So would you like to see the bunting? So I've basically made lots of these to make my bunting. And whether or not I can put it all out so you can see it, I might cut it into words actually if it won't fit. Just because I I'm putting it, my idea is to put it up in my window on Jubilee Day. So let me unravel it because I've wrapped it all up. So I've got here, see I've got another one. The same as that one. 2022. Let's turn it around so it's the right way for you. 2022. So you can see what I've done here. Now, what I decided to do, because I know the Queen's got... Um, she loves being in Scotland, in her castle in Scotland. So I've got some, some sort of almost tartany 
so that was that tartan check stencil in the background and then I did the hearts on the blue ones um but look i've done all of this so let me unravel it so you can see i've left myself lots of i've used red and white baker's twine i've gone gone with a th there's nothing like a theme is there um gone with a theme for this kept the red white and blue theme throughout so i've left myself lots of extra twine for hanging up and for deciding and i'll show you what what it all looks like i'll see if i can fit it all on here so it's all strung up now so what's great about these um ovals is that because you've got the holes all the way around the edge it's easy to get ribbon or thread through so let me unveil will i fit it all on i don't think i will i think it's probably too much <laughs> but you'll get the idea so we've got jube Ooh. unravel it a bit can i fit it in there jubilee yeah i think i'm gonna have to snip the other word off jubilee let's pull this along so we've got jubilee you can see and it does hang out up i'll have to hold it up when you can see at the end it hangs up nicely that they hang nice and straight and then i've got party i'm just going to move party along a bit and then I can snip it off because I want it to go one under the other anyway when I hang it up. So you can have yours in one big long line if you want to. Let me just shimmy them along. Shimmy, shimmy. There we go. I'll snip this off. I've got plenty on the other end so I can make it longer later. Right, so there's our Jubilee. Here's Party. Which might need a bit of sorting out now. Let me move those ones out of the way. Jubilee party. And look at the size of those letters and how beautifully they stand out to make that party. So we've got Jubilee and party. And then all I've got to do is thread up 2022. Okay. But you can see that that is, I know it's really hard to fit it on the screen. I'll hold it up at the end so you can see. But then 2022 will fit down there. And I th I'm going to put that in my window or on, might be on the fence in the garden. It depends what the weather's going to be like on that day, really. So that's my, my Jubilee bunting. So the one I showed you was with a stamped background. This is a stencil background. I'm going to use a stencil in my next little demo. So we'll look at that then. So that's bunting. I'm going to put that out of the way. Nice and simple to make. Those alphabets are, like I said, a must have for all of those sorts of makes. Let me put that one out of the way. I didn't really think through how large this was going to be. <laughs> oh, these little ovals. I've been having fun cutting all of those out, I can tell you. And then 2022, which I will thread up. I might have to post a picture later when I've got them up, might I? Right, so that's bunting. Then I was thinking about an invitation. So my little cupcake. So I've done a lot more of the prep this time. So let me show you the one that we put the glue on that we did live. Look, already it's gone clear. There's another one there that I did earlier, but I've shown you how to add the crystals. I'm like, where's that two that we did that I put out of the way there? Let's see, it's just got one tiny bit there. I'm going to put those on that film now. So they're ready to go when I need them. I'm going to put those out of the way because I have two that I did earlier with the crystals all added. So that is the one that we coloured in um, with all my crystals added like I did before. Hi, Zoe. Um... And I'm going to use those for my next card. My next, this could be an invitation. It could be a card that you're making to send to the Queen. Or, like I said, it doesn't have to be Jubilee. It could be for anything, but this is just a theme and an idea. So I've got a piece of six by six inch card here. Okay. Um, now I'm going to use a stencil. Do you know what? I don't think I am going to use a stencil today. I think I'm going to use a stamp. Because I really want to use 
Now, like I said, I know it's not a crystal art stamp, but you can use your crystals with them, and I'm going to show you how. I'm going to use the little crown out of this little froggy Gemmit stamp set, and I might use... Let's take that heart off. You can see how I get in a mess. I have to get everything out. Because I'll show you when I stamp it. It's got these lovely circles on there. Um, I think I'm going to use this flourish as well. Again, I know it's not strictly a crystal art stamp. But you can use it with crystals from your crystal art stash. No problem at all. And I'm going to show you how. So, are we going to have the same colours? Hmm... So the cakes are blue, so we're going to have our two little cakes. Um, are we going to have that? Congratulations, that's going to go around the edge. It's okay, I'm talking to myself. I'm trying to remember what I decided to do, but it's going a little bit out of the window. I think I'm going to use the blue, and I might make a little extra embellishment with the crown. I'm not sure. Let's see. So let's use that salty ocean again to create a little background on our card i'm going to bring that map back in so there are lots and lots of flourishes in our stamp sets this is just one i've chosen so you can look through your stamps the stamps that you've got um or like i said this stamp set is available online on our website um and create some really gorgeous backgrounds just by choosing the little stamps i'm going to just create a really bit quick background and I, the reason I'm choosing this flourish is it, again it's got that kind of regal feel to it I think I'm just going to stamp over the edges a bit and around and create my own background piece of card for my cakes to sit on I'm going to fill that little bit in there and use this bit down here. Just fill those bits in. Oh, that looks lovely already. Put some crystals on there, we'll be well away. The cupcakes are super cute, aren't they? And they're just so useful because you can use them for so many things. Like if, if you're doing an, um, a tea party or a baby shower, birthdays, you know, any of those things, a cupcake is always just the right thing, isn't it? Just inviting a friend over for a you know, like if you just want a cup of coffee and a chat and you just feel like a, they need spoiling, just send them a nice little card invitation through the letterbox. It makes everyone feel special, doesn't it? So I'm just filling in the spaces using this stamp. And like I said, this isn't necessarily purely a crystal art stamp. This is a gem it, but you can use your crystals with it. Purple could be incorporated. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Linda, I know. I want to do some purple. I've been, you see, what I thought was, it's just so predictable for me to do purple, isn't it? But I would just go, <laughs> I would go red, white and blue and avoid purple for the time being. But yeah, I could have done the background in purple. Um, or you, you could do, like I said, you could do a pur purple and silver instead. You could heat emboss this as well. It doesn't have to just be ink. I'm just doing ink tonight because I want to try and fit... If I don't get to show you the third project, I will share it with you and then um, show you another day. Because it might be one step too far. <laughs> but I will share it with you. I'll make sure that, that I get to make one another day if I don't. Because it's not strictly a crystal art project, the last one that I've got tonight. So... You can see how this look at look at that beautiful piece of card that we're making just by repeating this stamp and, and filling the space in. I do like it. I do love it when it's like a something simple like that. Look at that. Isn't that a lovely piece? You'd, you'd buy a piece of paper like that, wouldn't you? To use on a project. I would. I would buy a piece of card that looked like that. So what I could do to that is I could wash that out with a bit of colour because I've used my oxide ink again. So I could add some water in there and soften it if I wanted to or I could add some some different but you can see I've got all that and I can add all my crisp crystals should I show you should I show you something that this is storage oh. so 
So, probably not the best examples to show you, to be honest. Right. So can you see in here, these are all feature beads left over from um, craft projects I've had. So where these larger circles are, I may well end up putting some of these very special feature beads. But look at all these for making um, lovely jewel bejeweled things. So that's one of my store. That's just my feature beads. Let me find a better one to show you because I had somebody asking me and I promised to show so I will very quickly show you this. So I have my posh um, craft buddy storage sort of like little briefcase style boxes for my special. So one's got rhinestones in it, one I use for TV. Um, I also have lots of these. We sell these on the website as well in a, in a kit. I have one for each kind of colour family. So this is my oranges and yellows. You can see what I do is I store all the colours that are in a similar colour family in one box, which means, so I've got one for reds, I've got one for pinks and purples, I've got one for greens. So it means I can look at all the colours together. Um, they get filled up, you know, when I get new spares. So I've got a couple up there that are empty. But I've got all those sort of tones together. So when I'm looking for something like sh when I want to do shading, I can pick the colours out together. So I know that's interrupting what I was doing. But while I'm thinking of it, I can't remember the lady's name. I promised I would show. But I have one for each colour family, if that makes sense. I'll put that out of the way. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. Right, OK, so I've got that background and I've got my little cupcakes now do I want another shape for them to go on I could cut a circle couldn't I or an oval or maybe not what I'm also going to do oops I've cut myself some cards so you can see this is going to layer up and what I've left is a quite a wide border to decorate around the edge as well um, and I've got my little cupcakes here so I'm going to find that congratulations sandwich which was in this one. This is where it is. Yeah, so it's in this set, um, floral fizz, which is great for weddings and special occasions like this. I want to use that crown. I, I might make a little ribbon. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a ribbon with the crown because I want to use the crown. Right, so... I've got my little congratulations. This probably isn't the right. Now I'm going to get a different block. See, this is the other thing. You want a variety of acrylic blocks. So you've got the right one for what you're needing it for. And what I'm going to do, let's see if it's going to fit. Is it going to fit? Oh, it might not fit. Let's see. what. I'm, no, I'm going to make it as a sentiment, I think. We'll do something else with that border in a second. Right, I'm going to use the same blue. Now this ink isn't really for stamping. You'll always get a distressed sort of um, blotchy finish with it because it's not really a stamping ink, but I do like to stamp with it just because, um, because I like to, because I like to break the rules a little bit. Let's have a little congratulations. I might do it as a little banner, actually. Right, so you can see you can stamp with it, but you need to make sure you ink it well, and it will always be slightly muddled. So as long as you don't mind that, then use those inks for stamping. But like I said, they're not really, that's not really what they were designed to do. I'm going to cut this sentiment down. So this is going to be two and a half centimetres. And I'm going to then cut red at three centimetres. So I'm going to I'm going to make a little banner for this. I might end up using that crown stamp for a different, and then this one at three and a half centimetres. Blue three and a half centimetres I might end up doing a completely different project with that crown 
so you'll see I haven't cut the end off because what I want to do is I'm going to snip this a little bit I'm going to create a little banner like a royal like a royal banner so I'm going to I cut, you cut into the middle and then you cut from the corner into that middle cut that you've made and you'll get a banner with equal points if that makes sense so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this to the red one with my glue which hopefully I haven't put upside down this time they would yeah you could do so many things with that it's um that crown if you gold heat emboss it it looks absolutely amazing Linda um but yeah I was like that stamp is perfect for right now um yeah, gold heat embossing. I haven't done embossing for ages. I haven't got all my st heat embossing stuff out for ages. I might have to have a play tomorrow if I get any time. So I'm going to lay that on the red. Now you can see I've given myself a big overhang because this bit always needs more card than you think. So I'm going to cut into the middle again. I'm going to cut down into that line. It takes a lot more card than you think. So you can see, I'm now going to add my last layer in because I want it to follow the same colours as the rest of the card, the theme of the card and the bunting. So this was an invitation that I was making. Um, it would follow the theme of the party. It could be a little menu, couldn't it? A little cake menu of the cakes you're having at your, at your tea party or whatever it is you're doing. Barbecue or... I don't know. Is anyone having a street party? I remember the Silver Jubilee in 19... Ooh. Was it 1977? The Silver Jubilee. I think it was, wasn't it? Um, we had a big street party. Everyone brought their tables and chairs out and we all sat in the street. And Now I feel like that. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be happening where I live. Oh, I just left that wipe on. <gasps> What a disaster. I'm oh, such a disaster sometimes. So I've got that lovely banner. So I can either have it there. I can have it coming down the card. I've got my two little cakes. Oh, yeah, I quite like that. I might trim this card blank a little bit. Because I only had 8 by 8s And really, I think this needs to be a 7 by 7 And I'm not using that. Congratulations around there. I'm going to create a little crowny crown. Let's have a little crown. I feel like I need a little crown on here. Maybe a little circle. What do you think? Do I need a crown? Hmm. Let's trim this down. So I'm going to make this card into a 7x7. Seven seven, because that's one good thing about having large card blanks. You can trim them the size you like. Do I need a crown on there? Yeah, 1977. You had a street party too? I mean, I, you know, 1977. I won't tell you how old I was. <laughs> but I wasn't very old. I think I might have been just at secondary school, which is, yeah. Just. But I wasn't very old. Right, so. You can see how this is coming together now. Oh, yeah, that's better. That fits better now. I'm not putting that board around it right okay so I've got congratulations on there obviously that could be you are invited um we're having a party do I want it this way with the cakes above what do you think do I want the cakes above or do I want it I think it's better that way it looks more like, yeah it looks more like a banner doesn't it you know like those banners you know when they used to have jousts the royals used to have jousting. I know what I want to do with that. I want a ribbon. I do want a ribbon. I'm going to have a ribbon. So I need a piece of white card for my scrap box. It's going to fit across it. I can't not have a ribbon. I've got a bit of a thing about ribbons at the moment. Now, am I going to do it in a pattern of colours? Or am I going to do it in red? Or am I going to do it in blue? I could do it in brown from the cake, but I don't want brown. I think I'm going to do it in a bit of both, aren't I? Is it going to be too blue and too red? 
let's see. So you'll see when I ink up this, I have to go, I have to go over more quite a few times because, like I said, it's not a stamping ink. It'll give you like a distressed, a distressed look. I'm gonna go there. See now look at that crown. Isn't that brilliant? That crown. I love that crown. Um Am I going to go all red? Yeah, let's go all red. Sideways. Yeah, it's sideways, Diane. It's better, isn't it? I'm going to... This crown... It, I, it's worth... That frog stamp there. <laughs> it's worth it just for the crown and the book alone. I love them. Like if you want to do proper little princess crowns or king crowns or... See, look how lovely this is. It stamps so clearly and it's going to work perfectly with my crystals because I've got all those special ones as well. So I can go make... This is going to be too long, but that's fine. So that's my little crowny crown stamp. It's making that ribbon, which I'm going to trim. Oh, it's getting exciting now. Um... Now, I could cut that so it's slightly shaped, but I think because of the style of this card, I want this to be straight. So I'm going to go for two and a half centimetres, which is going to be, yeah, there. Turn that down. And, oh, look at that. I think I need a bit of blue, don't I? Finish that off. It is red, it doesn't need red as well. So we'll go three centimeters with the blue. There we go. Right now it's coming together. So, like I said, you could do all of this, could be all of this writing and stuff could be heat embossed if you've got your heat embossing out. See, that's gonna frame that. That's gonna get right. Okay, we're there. I'm happy. Finally, I'm happy. You'll be glad to hear. Dear. you know when you've got an idea in your head and you want it to look a certain way so I'm just using my, my little glue so I told you that glue just needed to come back down because I had my bag upside down we'll add this onto this blue which is obviously too long at the moment so we'll be trimming this down that lovely little crown we've got our banner I'm going to add this. I'm not going to ink the edges like I normally do because I want this to be quite crisp and clear, I think, on this card. Because it's got such bright, um, almost contemporary looking colours. It would be lovely in um, purple and silvery grey, wouldn't it? As well, I think. You could do this in either theme. I'm sure that if you are thinking that you want to send a card to the Queen, she would love a card, a crystal art card can't be a bit more sparkle can you you had a party in the village hall nikki i mean it seems like an absolute lifetime ago well it is a lifetime ago really if i think about it too hard um the golden jubilee i remember i was teaching then and i can remember i can remember we had like parties in the classroom i'm not sure what i did as an adult though then i don't remember it being like 1977 i feel like it wasn't Remember that there was a really good big um, concert, wasn't there? Didn't Carrie Barlow? Was it Carrie Barlow? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I've lived through too many. Was it Carrie Barlow that did something? Was that when he did that song, Sing, or My Dreaming? I'm sure you will all remember a lot more than me. My, my memories seem to be getting muddled up as I get older because there's just too many of them. They won't fit in my head anymore. Um, I'm going to do this nice and flat because I'm going to raise the cakes up a little bit. And I know I didn't frugal that middle out of that card, which is not like me at all. So, yeah, that's better as a 7x7, seven seven, I think. There we go. So we've got that bit. I'm going to trim this a bit. So this is going to go about here. Um, in fact, I'm going to trim at both ends. So I'm going to mark that with my nail. In a very technical way <laughs> and trim those off 
on that end and on this end. Yeah, you see, I remember that song because the choir at school learned to sing that song and they sang it so beautifully that I, there's nothing quite like children singing. Um, it brought me to tears and I'm not really like that. It was so beautiful. They sang it so beautifully. I can still remember it, it was beautiful, just beautifully done. So that's gonna slightly overlap my crowns, which is fine. Might bring that right up there. All right. Hmm. Don't know. Yeah, about there. So it's giving me that square. And then these two little cakes will fit in that square. Oh, yeah, I'm happier with that now. That's framed it a little bit better. I'm going to use some sticky pads now, though. Although I think. I'm... Yeah, there we go. I'll use up my little frugly bits. Look, I'm using up all these leftovers from my pads to. Raise, I'll raise that banner up. I feel like you're talking it through with me tonight. Oh, you know you have an idea in your head and then you're not quite sure how you're going to get there. That's how I started off this card. I kind of had an idea in my head, but I wasn't entirely certain. I'd spent so long getting the, ba the bunting sorted. I wasn't entirely certain what this was going to look like. So, thanks for your help. Um, right, so this is going to go on here. This will just raise this up above those crowns a little bit. See, it's just the leftover bits from where the pads were in there before. So I can put that about there. And I've obviously got some little crystals. I can add crystals into the background if I want to. I can add them on the crowns. Um, I've got them on my cakes. I can go crystal crazy if I want to. So I'm going to add nothing like it. You can never have too many crystals, especially if it's for a jubilee, can you? That's what we're saying. Is that a concert? Out? That's right. Wasn't it on... The, why am I also thinking it was on the... They did something on the Thames, didn't they, in boats? And it rained <laughs> a lot, if I remember. I'm, oh, yeah, I can't not use it waste bits. I think Madness played. Oh, yeah, it was... I, it, it's all yeah you see it's funny isn't it because i can remember the silver jubilee almost better but now you're talking about it i can kind of i've got all these strange recollections of things going on oh i wonder what's going to happen this time then right so i'm going to add in now where do i want these to go this one here so i'm going to do this one flat and that one raised there we go so i'm going to stick this one in so I think I'm going to flash the other project at you. We're going to be here till midnight, aren't we? <laughs> and I haven't even added, added all the rest of the crystals onto this yet. Right, so I'm going to add this on. There. Add this one at a jaunty little angle. There. There, so we've got our two cakes. Oh, it's coming together now. So, oh, I do like the crowns. Yeah, you see the crowns have made it definitely feel more jubilee-like. So that's our card. I'm obviously going to add crystals in. Um, let me see if I can find... Actually, let me look, look in my special little box. Have I got any that I feel would look right on those? You see, they're pinky red. Mm. That's some little golden ones. I could put some golden ones on there. Or I can put some... I've got some light large... Right, let me put some of these on here just while, while you're here so you can see that they all... So these these circles are slightly larger. There's some smaller circles on as well. But they're perfect for little feature beads that you get left over with your projects because I don't believe for a minute that I'm the only one that gets um, these left. I'm going to take them straight from the tub. And see, look, they're just perfect size. Perfect size for this little crown. So we're gonna have a little bit of silvery. I could always colour these with my gem pens if I want a different colour when they're dry. But these will just sit nicely on these little circles on the crown. Perfecto. And these again, like I said, these are just leftovers from my crystal art makes that you can use 
with these lovely Gemit stamps, as well as any other gems you have in your stash. Oh yes, a bit of blingage going on. So let's just add a few more in here. What do you see? I'd forgotten about this crown stamp. I don't know what made me think of it today. And I was like, right, I must find that because everyone needs to just see just how brilliant it is for this kind of thing. There, sparkly. And there's, you can see there's the smaller circles where I can add, I'm gonna add some um, more crystals on later and I'll add the crystals in there. I probably won't add crystals to the background because it's just a nice circly background. So that's my card make. Let me show you the other project that I, I will, before the Jubilee, um, I will find time to show you how to do it because it's not strictly a crystal art project. Okay, so this is a little tiara I've been making. So you, what, you do, what you can do is get a bit of ribbon and tie it at the back. Obviously when it's around somebody's house, head, it will bend, but I've decorated it again with all the feature beads from my little box. And this die set is the Lattice Wallet die. But it was kind of like a bit of a, a hybrid because it's got crystal art feature beads decorating the crown and then it's some die cutting. So I'll probably show you this little make um, on the Craftbody page before the Jubilee. So if you want to make um, tiaras for the kids or whatever, then I'll do this another night because I'm not...